Welcome to the Atlanta VoiceOver Studio Podcast. I'm Mike Stout. And I'm Heidi Rue. The Atlanta VoiceOver Studio's mission is to equip, inspire, and elevate by giving you the resources that you need to create the voiceover career that you want. Now, this podcast features conversations with industry professionals that are geared to give you more insight into the world of voiceover. Today, our guest is Nathaniel Sundholm. Got that right? You yes. got it. That's he, me. He is visiting us uh, from Emory, and we're so excited to hear from him, but just so that you get to know him a little bit, he's got a Master's of Science in Speech and Language Pathology with voice specialization from Vanderbilt Medical School, and of course, he's at Emory Voice in Midtown and Decatur right now, but then there's a couple other things that you may want to know about him. He's originally from Brooklyn, but you're not, yeah, you're not going to hear the accent, though, unless you like cut him off in traffic. Then it it may come out in full force. And he also, you remember the show Fame? So he went to the Fame School in New York City, and that's where he started like his whole voice journey. He's a singer. He's performed in New York City. And then now he's kind of more on the educational side. Um, but you may catch him here in Atlanta as well performing. He performs with the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra Chorus, and he also is a huge volleyball enthusiast. That's right. <laughs> did I get it all? You did. That's some of it at least. Um, Okay, cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and I, I hope I get to catch you at Atlanta Symphony. They have some wonderful, wonderful shows. Yeah, we're um, doing an opera in June. Oh, so nice. for that, we have I have a very limited part in singing. It, the chorus is not as active in this one. So I'd say, you know, if you're going to come to something really fun, the yeah. Christmas show every year Ooh, is okay. just a really fun time. Okay. Yeah, we are all about the Christmas stuff. Yeah. I mean, anything and everything. But unfortunately, last year we we didn't get to make it. So, yeah. hopefully this year. Well, now that now that we know somebody who's in it, yeah, we will we'll definitely do it. <laughs> yeah, play your cards right, and might wave at you. Hey, all right, <laughs> all right. Well, let's get to uh, some of the questions, uh, Nathan. Okay, so let's oh, start with some. Nathaniel. Nathaniel, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I could have sworn when you came in here, you said you could call me Nathan. Nope. That's my glad brain. we got that. Straight. That's my yeah. brain. Well, I, I'm just going to go back to calling you Dr. Sunhole, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> even though you're not. <laughs> All right. Well, some basic vocal health questions. What are some do's to keep our voice in working order? Yeah. So I think the most important thing to recognize about the voice is that it is a really intricate combination of a lot of different subsystems working together, hopefully in harmony. So the voice is brought about by a combination of your respiratory system your articulatory system and how you formulate words. Um, the source of all sound comes from your larynx with two little flaps of skin that we so affectionately call the vocal folds or vocal cords. They vibrate and create a sound source that then is filtered up through your articulatory system and resonates in your skull to create a sound that is meaningful. So when we think about the do's of taking care of the voice, you have to take into consideration all of those subsystems. So for respiration, making sure that you can breathe. Most of us can. Um, but for those that can't, you know, if you have asthma, making sure that your asthma is well treated, that you are following up with a pulmonologist and your primary care physician to make sure that's under wraps. Um, if you're doing an especially vigorous take, making sure that you are in good cardiovascular health mm -hmm. to be able to keep up with the demands of what you're asked to do. Um, and then if you live in a really dry climate or a climate where you are prone to having more allergies, making sure that you take care of the mucus um, in a way that's helpful rather than harmful. Then for the vocal folds, they are two flaps of skin that come into contact and then vibrate. Um, the tissue quality is very similar to the inside lining of your lip. And so you can kind of think of taking care of them in a very similar way. So um, being well hydrated, super important. Um, we like to recommend that before any type of vigorous vocal activity, you start hydrating about 90 minutes before. So if you are planning on doing some recording, you should be drinking water or any other non-caffeinated <laughs> beverage. Grabs like water grabs bottle. a water bottle. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. Um, any other non-caffeinated beverage about an hour and a half before. Mm -hmm. And that is just going to get you at a baseline of preparedness. Um, and there are a lot of other bits and pieces that go into taking care of the vocal folds well. 
But I think the the biggest word to take into account is efficiency. Because the vocal folds are coming together and hitting each other a lot, every time you redo something, redo something, redo something, those vocal folds are coming into contact every time. The louder you are, the harder they hit each other. Um, and so, and the higher pitch you are, the farther they have to stretch. And so the, um, the importance of maintaining an efficient practice in your recording or your practicing is really important. Finally, from the, you know, articulatory standpoint, um, I know that there have been some questions on how can I have the most clear speech or how can I make sure that what I am saying comes across in the way that I want it to. Um, a lot of that is just upkeep of maintaining really clear, crisp, articulatory drills that can get you into the mind frame of having the speech prosody that you want to have in that particular segment. Okay. A lot of people find having a mirror is very helpful just oh. to kind of check in with yourself. Hmm. Okay, cool. What should we look for in that mirror, like if we're checking in? Yeah, so... Um, you can keep an eye on what areas of your body you might be accumulating some excess tension. So yeah. if, for instance, you're doing a segment which requires a lot of yelling or some very intense speech, you might notice that your shoulders are creeping up. Mm. You might notice some excess jaw tension. You might notice, you know, that big vein popping out <laughs> of your neck. Um, no, never. Yeah. And those are all... You know, they're fine in small increments, right? I'm not telling you to never do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But keep an eye on things that make a change in your body. And it's more about being aware of how that change impacts mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and how long you can maintain it without feeling fatigued. Yeah. I notice that change every time that um, I ask Mike to buy something else. Yeah. <laughs> Those <laughs> veins. <laughs> Actually, it's more about the DIY this projects. Is this is true. This the is a very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. this is a hot subject right now. <laughs> we won't go into it. <laughs> so what about the don'ts? Like what can we do to prevent uh, harm mm -hmm. with all those things? The articulatory, the respiratory, and the, mm, mm, what was the other one? Shoot. I was trying to remember. Phonatory. It's Phonatory. your vocal okay. folds. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Okay. Um, I think the, the biggest thing I want you to come away with is anything that hurts, feels bad, or makes you less efficient is something you should try to avoid. That list is going to be different for everyone. Okay. And so to give a definitive list of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this is really hard because we really want you to focus on the things that you can do mm -hmm. that help you feel better maintain your efficiency, mm -hmm. decrease fatigue, and help you do something that you enjoy and are passionate about every day without having to sacrifice other parts of your life. Um, some really big things that are not great for the vocal folds in particular, um, smoking, it's just not good for you. It, there are no positive health benefits from yeah. smoking. So that's something we highly encourage you to avoid or quit doing. Mm -hmm. um, there are, you know, a lot of stage suggestions on how to get a particular sound. Um, so smoke a couple cigarettes if you want a lower husky voice. <laughs> yeah. Have a couple shots of whiskey if you want a lower husky voice. Scream into a fan for a half an hour if you want a lower husky voice, right? Um, they tend to all give you a low and husky voice, which is fine for that one voice, right? If all you want and need is a low and husky voice, and that's all you're going to do for the rest of your life, go ahead. Yeah. But if you want to be flexible and have mm. flexibility as part of your skill and be marketable in a wide range of things... Your voice also needs to be flexible. Okay. Um, hydration, super important. So don't be dehydrated. Mm -hmm. um, don't put water away from your mind. Keep that with you at all times. Don't apologize for needing to be hydrated. <laughs> or um, having to go to the bathroom multiple exactly. times because of it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, I'd say the best thing to do for that particular need is to think about drinking more frequently rather than aiming for this huge volume goal. Mm. Um, volume can be very intimidating. If I tell you, you need to drink a gallon of water a day. Some people just go, nope, can't do it. I right. can't drink that much water. <laughs> but if I tell someone, you know, 
half a glass of water an hour, that adds up. Yeah. Sure. Right? And that's a place to start. And your body will get used to absorbing that fluid better. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to think of other immediate don'ts. I'd say don't ignore a okay. voice change. So if you've noticed that certain things that used to be really easy or the amount of time that you can record or use your voice in a meaningful way decreases and decreases and decreases, do not ignore it. Yeah. Any voice change that lasts for about two weeks is something that you should be considering and you should see an otolaryngologist. That is an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Okay. The Emory Voice Center, we have three laryngologists. That is an otolaryngologist that focuses primarily on the larynx. Your larynx is the organ that houses your vocal folds. Mm -hmm. So they are specially trained to take care of voices as well as the other things that your larynx coordinates. Um, The point of that visit is, one, to make sure you're okay. Two, to get a really, really good understanding of what your mechanism look like. Um, It gives you a chance to understand how your vocal folds work. It gives you a chance to see what might be different about your vocal folds. And very likely, at that same visit, you'll meet someone who is a speech-language pathologist. That's the role that I'm currently in. Um, They kind of act as a person that will teach you ways to use what you have to maximize your efficiency and minimize the amount of effort you need to put into using mm-hmm. your voice how you want to. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. And it sounds like, too, that even like if you notice changes in your voice, mm-hmm. that the best way to prevent any long-term damage is also just the, um, just the observation at the very beginning, right? And going and having it looked at before it could get bad. Is that what you're saying too? Yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, we're all human. We yeah. all have demands, right? I'm not saying that if you wake up and your voice is a little raspy, that's the end of the world. Sure. Um, there are a lot of things that can cause a change in the voice, but you're right. Absolutely. What I'm saying is Earlier is always better. Early detection. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like, I feel like I'm over explaining this and I can't figure out the words. Yes. Yeah. Early detection. Early detection. Okay. Early intervention. Mm-hmm. Um, scar occurs in the vocal folds mm-hmm. and can occur because of recurrent injury. And so if there's something that you're doing that you're not aware of yeah. that's contributing to that consistent injury, then you are going to consistently injure your vocal folds. Mm-hmm causing a scar that decreases your flexibility, decreases your efficiency, and just makes your life harder. Yeah. Your life is already hard. Right. You don't need to make it harder. Tell me about it. Jeez. (laughs) Um, So what I think I'm hearing, I could be totally wrong, Mm -hmm. is as long as you drink enough water, it doesn't matter how much coffee you drink or chocolate you consume or dairy. And what I would say (laughs) back at you is it completely (laughs) depends on how your body responds to those things. Okay. So some folks might do fine with 12 cups of coffee. They might coffee. Uh, I heard it. There it is. Boom. Um, Whereas someone else (laughs) might really have difficulty if they have, you know, really bad reflux or they have a tendency to get really dehydrated. Um, But I'd say yes. As a general rule of thumb, um, for any caffeinated drink, I would just pair that with one glass of water. So if you're going to have a cup of coffee, have a cup of water to balance it out. Um, So far as dairy goes, I'm fine with dairy. I could eat a whole tub of ice cream before I had to sing. You lucky. It wouldn't give me a problem. (laughs) But granola, can't do. Oh, huh. It just messes me up. And that's something that I had to learn. Yeah. Because, you know, your mom gives you, you know, Good, good snacks, quote unquote, right. when you're running out the door. Here, take this for granola bar. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, ah, I can't take a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> we learned that one early on. Okay. Okay, great. Well, okay. Mike. I got a, a quick question to follow sure. up. So as far as people, I, I love water, mm-hmm. except when I'm sick. Mm-hmm. I just cannot drink it. But every other time I can just down it. So okay. for those people out there who want to stay hydrated, but water isn't their thing, is there a substitute that works well? Just drink. Okay. I don't particularly care. Most, you know, if you have uncontrolled diabetes and you have to really be careful of your sugar levels, if you have, um, you know, 
high blood pressure and you have right. to worry about a lot of sodium, then those are other concerns that you have to take sure. into play. But from a hydration standpoint, um, there's really no significant difference in the amount of hydration that your body gets okay. based on water versus like apple juice okay. or something like that. Okay. Good to know. But I'd say as long as you're drinking, that's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, moving on, there are some voiceover jobs that are really long and can potentially exhaust the voice. So do you have any advice for vocal exhaustion? Mm-hmm. So I'd say... I figured he might. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, I'd say, one, know what you're capable of. So knowing your limitations is very important. Um, one other thing to take into account is that don't let one job sacrifice your career. One job that is really, really hard and asks you way too much of yourself is not worth you giving up a career that could last 30 years. Mm. Um, so just really being savvy about what you're being asked to do and your own limitations. Um, often people's response to, hey, this is what I can offer you and this is what I need, tells you a lot about their working relationship. So what they say back to you right. probably tells you whether or not you want to work with them. Yeah. Um, and I think the more that we can advocate for ourselves, the more um, understanding employers will have when it comes to these sometimes ridiculous demands. Right. Yeah. And they want it so quick. And you're like, okay, my voice does have limits here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're so right about that. This is kind of along those same lines because a lot of times with video games mm -hmm. or animation, it requires screaming and, and yelling at some part. Part. So is there is there a way that we can do that? Is there a method or advice that you would give to where that wouldn't cause damage? Or is that more of just like you've just got to do it at shorter periods of time or allow for more rest? Or Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I think, <laughs> yeah, so take into account what your schedule has for that day, right? So if you know you have a job that's coming up that is going to require a lot of vigorous voice use, then prioritizing that a little bit differently from everything else you'd be doing that day. Okay. So, for instance, you have some commercial job that you've been thrown that really desires a crisp, clear sound. I probably would not do that right after you've yeah. just taped a you know video game banshee scream. <laughs> um, you know, save that for later in the day when you don't have any work left to do. Limit the amount of time that you spend on it. So, if it's super vigorous, you know, give yourself frequent breaks, frequent hydration. I would have a little steam inhaler that you could take little okay. breaks and just breathe in some warm, humidified mm -hmm. air. Um, and three, um, we're up to three. Um, yes, you can scream in a way that is healthy and efficient. Okay. Um, has to do with how you support with your respiratory system. Um, there are several ways that you can train yourself to utilize other structures to create sound that is noisy, right? Mm. Screaming is noisy. Right, right. It has a couple components, noise, energy, some kind of emotion behind it, mm -hmm. grunting, those kinds of things. Yeah. It's visceral, right? You can achieve a visceral sound without compromising your laryngeal health. Okay. Um, there is a person in New York, her name is Melissa Cross. She's known as the Queen of Scream, and she has made her living teaching people how to scream well. Wow. Um, she has a couple books out there, so that's okay. something that you can just kind of look say, up. I I think she's, the name sounds familiar. Yeah, she's yeah. fantastic. Um, that's also something that a speech language pathologist would be very useful for, mm -hmm. um, really taking what you need to do, the demands of your job, and finding the most ergonomic way to accomplish it. Okay. Got it. Great. Awesome. Um, well, that kind of rolls in, and I think it probably will will taper. So allergies, mm -hmm. they can wreak havoc on a mm -hmm. voice actor. So uh, what are some of the things that we should do to prevent some of the drainage that we get and maybe the scratchy throat, uh, which is just the pain and the bane of our existence <laughs> during those times? For sure. So the allergies definitely increase the amount of mucus that you are producing, but it also changes the quality of your mucus. So um, the quintessential allergy mucus tends to be this kind of sticky, clear mucus that's just everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of it. Um, 
one of the biggest problems with that is it just robs your body of hydration. So when you are feeling those allergic symptoms of itchy, watery eyes, post-nasal drip, scratchy throat, a little bit of, you know, inflammation in general, that kind of cloudy feeling in your head, pound the water. Just make it part of your job. Drink, 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 drink. Um, steam, breathe it in, breathe it out. A uh, neti pot, so that is uh, like a nasal saline rinse. Mm -hmm. Looks like a little teapot. You would fill it with distilled room temperature water or purified room temperature water. Mix in some saline solution that you can buy at the pharmacy, and you just empty out your sinuses by pouring pouring it in one nostril and letting it flow out the other, and then reversing on the other side. Which is such a weird feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Super strange. Yeah. But if you can get into a consistent irrigation cycle, then that'll keep you from getting that consistent post nasal drip that oh. is so annoying. Um, it will decrease it. It might not cure it per se. So but. we should do that before like the allergy season even starts? You know, it's a good practice to okay. get into. If you have any post-nasal drip issues or mm -hmm. congestion or things like that, um, I'd say it's a pretty easy practice to put into habit and will just keep you fresh. Okay. How should, would that be once a day? Is that kind mm -hmm. of the frequency would yep. be a good? Yep. Good. And okay. then as needed, you can do it more. So okay. if morning to clear out all the gunk that you accumulated while you were sleeping and mm -hmm. then in the evening to clear out all the gunk you accumulated during the day. And then somewhere in the middle, if you're starting to feel that very full feeling. Yeah. One of the things that um, I actually had a job that it was booked right before Thanksgiving mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't get out of it. Um, it was for a big retailer, so we had to get it on. And of course, Monday morning, I woke up and my voice was like shot and mm -hmm. I was sick and did everything I could to get better on Wednesday. Wednesday morning, I woke up and like, it still was pretty bad. So I just did a bunch of vocal warmups, like all morning long on the way there, somehow eked it out. But I was surprised because I didn't know vocal warmups could help that at that point i mean listen afterwards it was like back to normal but it does that help too if it's pretty bad and nasally and mucusy yeah so um follow-up question for you okay. what types of vocal warm-ups were you doing so i did the sirens mm -hmm. a lot um and then i did um a and lot sorry i'm gonna ask you a follow-up yes. question so siren talking from low pitch to yes. high pitch and then back down. Yes. And then what is your vehicle for transporting that siren? Are you using an ooh? Are you... Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, yeah. Just ah. Uh. And I did do the... Um, I did do... Like, well, now I can't even do it. But yes. <laughs> the pressure is yeah. <laughs> I did just did scales with the, okay. the lip, lip trills. trills. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also just did a lot of work on my diaphragm mm -hmm. so that that way I could make sure that that was nice and... Like that was just ready to support with whatever came out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that was all I did. You know, your vocal folds are super tiny, mm -hmm. right? They are they are a part of a whole, and so you know if they swell a little bit, that can change how your voice sounds. If you have a lot of mucus and things, that can change how your voice sounds. If your chest is a little congested, that can change how you support your voice. Um, a lot of traditional vocal warm ups help target a more more global approach to your voice, right? Oh, so okay. when you're doing the siren, um, you are targeting primarily the voice, but you're also targeting breathing, right? You probably are taking in a much larger breath when you prepare to do this very, you know, vocal task. Um, similarly, working on breathing, even though you're focusing on your breathing, in order to breathe well, your vocal folds need to relax. They assume an open state, so they open up when you breathe in, they come together and then start vibrating when you do things like laugh, cough, talk. Mm -hmm. So when you breathe in and you're focusing on that breathing, they open up and have a chance to just settle down. So in your particular case, I can't really comment on what exactly happened, yeah. but I'd say it's probably a combination of one, you had a plan uh -huh. and you just went with it, right? right? So you focused on the things that you knew and that worked, mm -hmm. right? You were a little meticulous with it, mm -hmm. which is super important. So knowing the things that work for you, sticking to the plan, doing it, and it gave your body a chance to simultaneously relax into the good muscle memory that you have already 
and prepare you for a task by warming up and making you more aware of those structures that you're going to need for the task at hand. Got it. Um, so yes, in that case, vocal warm-ups are super helpful. Okay. I'd also say in that case, what would be super helpful is having a teammate that you can contact mm -hmm. in those moments. Um for a voice actor, for anybody that is using their voice professionally, um, I would say it is almost essential that you have a laryngologist and a voice specialized speech pathologist okay. on your squad to call in those moments. Got it. It'd be very similar to an all-star quarterback right. waking up with a sore shoulder the day before a big game, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to call their coach. They're going to call their physical therapist, and they're going to call their um, sports medicine physician, right? Okay. They're all mm -hmm. on their team. You're not different. You are a vocal athlete at the, you know, you're the apex of what people do with their voice. Yeah. And you really need to treat yourself that way. Okay. That's great. And for everyone that's listening on the podcast, um, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can actually see Nathaniel's actually, I mean, he's describing it really well, but he's also demonstrating it with his hands. So if you feel like you're more I'm of a from visual. from Brooklyn. I talk no, it's my great. Hands. <laughs> it's great because I'm more of a visual yeah. learner. And so for anyone else that is similar, then that may be a good thing to check out. Okay. So the next thing is this is kind of I actually was just in a session today, and the engineer on the other si side, I was just engineering it, but the engineer on the other side said, ooh, mouth noise, we hear a lot mm -hmm. of it. So this is the nemesis of the voice actor. What can we do? Because we've heard green apples. Mm -hmm. Of course, I just try and drink a lot of water, but sometimes even that, for some people, it can be more difficult. So what, what do you suggest? So to clarify, for all my non-voice over yeah. actors that are listening. Thank you. Um, no, thank sure. <laughs> mouth noise is actually gaining in popularity with the ASMR craze. That's what? right. Yes. yes. So oh mouth noise is that kind of flapping sound <laughs> that you might hear that often is incidental. So it's not something that the person is trying to achieve, but rather happens as a physiological principle of how the tissue is interacting with your teeth, how your tongue is interacting with the roof of your mouth or the back of your teeth, your lips, etc. So, mouth noise. One, be well hydrated. So if you started drinking an hour and a half before, you probably wouldn't have as much. Some people get dry mouth with nervousness. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of stage actors have this problem. A lot of people in the studio, whether you're doing voiceover or singing or some other um, type of recording, there are a couple over-the-counter products that are actually super helpful. So one company that makes an oral lubricant product that I like is called Biotine. It's not the only one out there, mm -hmm. but it is a good one. The store brands are also good. Um, they, it comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. Um, Biotine comes in a lozenge that you can just pop in in the moments before and then spit out. It comes in an oral spray kind of like Banaka Blast. <laughs> Comes I haven't heard in, that in ages. I know. <laughs> Banaka Blast, you're welcome. If people buy you on Amazon, it was me. I expect 1%. Um, it comes in a mouthwash that okay. you can do you know, at night or in the morning or before a big performance or something. Um, and then finally, it comes in a gel, similar to how Aura Gel comes in. Oh, yeah. um, and I'd say in a really, really dry environment, or that gel form is my my go-to. Um, the lozenge is really helpful before an interview or something like that. You can just pop it in, be good to go. So basically what I'm saying is a way to reduce the mouth noise is just to reduce the amount of friction that your tissue is creating. Um, all that you are hearing is the interaction of two tissue groups coming together and then peeling apart, essentially. So if you can add a barrier with saliva, that peeling apart will be quieter. That totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of physics. I mean, everything I know, is physics, oi. <laughs> I had to take it. Imagine that. Um, one other thing, so far as mouth noise goes, um, if you don't utilize respiration well, right, and, and you're completely relying on just your larynx and your, mm. your mouth to formulate the words, then you're going to get a much noisier sound and you're also going to rely more on the things that your lips and teeth and tongue are doing. And so... 
ergonomically thinking about how your body is set up to have good respiratory support, right? So Mm -hmm. sitting in a way that your torso is nice and elongated and relaxed, standing up, making sure that the microphone is at a good placement. Um, Placement matters, right? Mm -hmm. So the microphone is kind of sitting right at my lower lip level. Mm -hmm. That's my preference. Um, Some people like it a little bit higher up, but my encouragement for you would be to maintain a neutral position with your chin so that if you were sitting, it would just feel like you're sitting. Microphones move. You don't need to move to the microphone. Mm -hmm. And while it seems very far from mouth noise, microphone placement can also make a big difference. So if you know Mm -hmm. you have a really dry mouth, you forgot your biotin at home, you didn't drink an hour and a half before because you're picking up the kids. You don't have your banaca. You (laughs) forgot your green apples. Nobody had them, right? Um, You can position your microphone to make sure that you're eliminating some of that sound. So coming in at more of a 30-degree angle instead of straight on, Mm -hmm. while it might change the acoustic signal a little bit, most of that can be corrected fairly easily. Um, So if you're a lip, mouth noise kind of person, Mm -hmm. or you get that on the roof of your mouth with your tongue, then just adjust away. Yeah. And it decreases a little bit, and it's a little easier to clean up and out. Interesting. Uh, something else that I've had to deal with. When I was a kid, I I spoke like this because mm-hmm. I slurred my asses so all the I. time. Imagine that. You did too? Look, yeah. my, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to speech uh, mm-hmm. class, and now I, ever since third grade, I've overcorrected, and, and I try and control it now, but my sibilance, mm-hmm. like, I just get in the throes of a, of a like, it, it's okay now, but if I'm in the throes of a, of a recording, mm-hmm. and, you know, especially when they need it high energy, or mm-hmm. even just in auditions, it gets to be very sibilant. So okay. are there ways to minimize that and self-correct? Yeah, so let's, again clarify. So a sibilant is a sound that inherently has noise quality in it. So that would be your s, sh, f, z, sh, zh, um, and also your ch and z. So those sounds inherently have a noise quality to them. Their acoustic nemesis are the sonorant groups, and those are all the sounds that are nice to listen to. They're sonorant, the mmm, mmm, ooh. Uh, ah, e, oh. um, and so a very good way to find a balance when you are given your, your sheet, um, or you have, if you have time to go over what you're supposed to be reading, um, taking some time to emphasize the sonorant sounds will all f- often help you balance out the increased level of sibilance. So one way to go through things is to just read through it and eliminate all consonants. Mm. So if you were, I'm trying to find something on the <laughs> table to read, Lord. Uh, does that work? Ah, sure, whatever. Okay, beginner voiceover intensive manual. So if you were going to say this with this exercise I'm asking you to do, so you're just eliminating all the other sounds oh. but the vowels. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It gives you a chance to focus on them, and then that becomes your emphasis. Hmm. Read through it once or twice that way, and then slowly but surely add in some of those other sounds. Okay. Um, the more you pay attention to something, the more you awkwardly will make worse. Yeah. Right. So like, hey, you, less S the next time <laughs> you read it. Yes, sir. It's just <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> Right, um, right. So one, don't freak out. Yeah. Right. You can work around it. Um, th- that's also where I'd say if you don't have an established relationship with either a voice coach or a speech language pathologist, that would be a good thing that you could work on together um, if it's really impairing you from doing your job well. But I'd say, you know, Great. focus on the vowels. Yeah, that's super helpful. Super, I super out. helpful. S- super helpful. <laughs> yeah, and if there are particular sounds, so the F, uh-huh. for instance, um, you know, there are all types of people out there, all types of speakers out there, and it is very possible that someone was not afforded the opportunity to work with a speech therapist when they were younger, and they may want to go into acting or want to go into voice actor, uh, voice acting, which is also acting. Um, the, you know, it's never too late 
to change something about your speech, Mm -hmm. whether that be an accent, if you want to have accent reduction or learn more accents, if you want to change something about your natural speaking pattern, um, there is a lot that can be done. As a first step, if this is you out there, there is <laughs> one, there is hope. Two, um, grab a mirror yeah. and just watch what you're doing. Okay. There are a lot of ways that you can kind of get more comfortable with your body and more aware of what you're doing just by watching what you do. And that awareness will help you make changes. Hmm. So if you find that for me, my mom said, look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> What I want to meet your mom know, after she's you're... Gonna, she's going to listen to this and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Um, so I used to stick my tongue out straight and to the right. So I had this little deviation out to the right front. Huh. So my name is Nathaniel Sundholm. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> it was rough. I was fat. I was 11. I had a bowl cut. It was not good. But my speech is better. Um, so it was just a matter of You know, taking some time every day to just kind of pull my tongue back a little bit, move it a little bit more center. Um, And, you know, it just is what it is. But I'd say don't give up. There are plenty of ways to fix it. Okay. And that would be the same for impediments too, right? Yes. Use the mirror. So if you have an owl problem, mm -hmm. um, definitely, you know, consult with a speech language pathologist. Again, nobody is going to be... condemning to you for having a speech difference um if it's something that you want to work on there are more than happy to work on it with you Mm -hmm. um but yeah being aware of what you're doing visualizing what you're doing feeling what you're doing and then making a change okay cool two things that Mm -hmm. everyone deals with that i want to know your advice on okay one is hiccups Mm -hmm. and the second one is coughing is there a right way to cough Mm -hmm. so hiccups are while they feel like a voice thing are actually not triggered by your voice they tend to be one of two things one a diaphragmatic spasm or two an esophageal spasm Mm -hmm. so your esophagus is the tube that connects from your throat down to your stomach Your diaphragm is a muscular system that divides the cavity between where your lungs live and where your intestines and your stomach live. So your diaphragm should, at rest, look like an umbrella. Mm. I'm going to look at the camera with my hand motions. (laughs) Look like an umbrella, and when it tenses, it actually flattens out and creates space for the lungs to fill that cavity Mm. down and back. So if this diaphragm spasms, you get this feeling, right? Ah. That quick breath in. Mm -hmm. Um, It's hard to control. So one, I'd say just regular stretching of your torso to allow for increased level of space, right? There's kind of this feeling of awkwardness when you have the hiccups of, oh God, here they are. I'm (laughs) hiccuping again. I can't make it stop. You know, holding your breath then makes sense because you're forcing your diaphragm to maintain a um, isotonic contraction that will keep it from activating in a downward motion. Um, Some people have said, hold your breath for a minute, hold your breath for 30 seconds. It's going to be a little different for everyone. Um, If it's esophageal, the the tube that connects from your throat to your stomach, often you can help that with just drinking a little bit of warm water and just a little bit. You don't need to guzzle a bunch. but Unless you're dehydrated. And you need that. Then it's probably too late. If you're dehydrated (laughs) in the studio, you're an hour and a half behind. You'll be hydrating yourself after the studio. Um, So a little sips of warm water. And then don't freak yourself out because more freak out means more muscle tension. More muscle tension means more spasms. More spasms mean more hiccups. Okay. And then the coughing. Is there a good way to cough? So um, if you're sick, you're sick. You can't really control that. Best way to cough is get it up and out. Right. Um, Unnecessary coughs, so those dry, hacking coughs because of a tickle that you kind of make yourself do are really never helpful. So I'd say avoid those coughs by either having a sip of something or a lozenge, chew some gum, etc. Okay. And then for um, the cough to clear your throat, right, of that gunk mm-hmm. or something, a someone described it as a middle-of-church service private cough. <laughs> yeah. So the very breathy <laughs> kind of 
quiet cough uh-huh. is your best option. Oh, okay. That's a great way to describe it. Okay, uh-huh. awesome. Nathaniel, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I still I have a lot more questions for you, so maybe we'll, ha- we'll have you back on. Um, but until then, if, if someone would love to connect with you or someone at Emory, how could they do that? Absolutely. So, um, one, you can always find us online. Our uh, website is the emoryvoicecenter.org. So emoryvoicecenter.org. Um, you can also find us through the general Emory page. Um, you can also find us on Instagram at the Emory Voice Center. Um, and, you know, if you have questions, give us a call. We're more than happy to ask answer those. Um, and, you know, just Drop by for a visit. If you're ever in Midtown, yeah. come up to the ninth floor of the medical office tower. Okay. Say you're in to see Nathaniel, you want to come for a visit, and I'll pop out into the lobby and say hey. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, thank you again so much, Nathaniel. We really appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank and you. Yeah, you helped answer a lot of questions so and a lot of big words, so I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. And if you need a dictionary for yeah. this, just tag me in your questions yeah. <laughs> at Emory Voice Center, and I will clarify. Awesome. Perfect. Thanks again. No problem. Thank you for joining us today as we navigate the world of voiceover and strive to elevate what we can offer as voice talent. And if you enjoyed this episode, sign up for our email newsletter where we'll send you a juicy VO tip every Monday morning. So you can find the link for that in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode that could benefit your career. We hope you feel inspired to move one step closer to your goal. 